Okay, what you're seeing here, this is a model I have made myself. The middle section is an actual fossil of a internal mold of a cephalopod shell. So it's gray and featureless, doesn't show any of the, the ridges of the septal grooves or separation discs. And I put on Sculpey clay at the back. The back part of the shell was added on, that's fictional, but it was modeled with clay. And the front was modeled with clay, but it is based upon what uh, scientists believe they looked like by looking at their living relatives. There are a few, there are maybe half a dozen in all the world, they're extremely rare to find fossils of the soft-bodied tentacles uh, preserved. It's extraordinarily rare because the soft-bodied creatures and the soft-bodied uh, flesh rots away so quickly that it's rare circumstances that it is buried quickly, very deep in an oxygen uh, low environment. So usually cliffs, animals had to tumble over cliffs and be buried uh, after sinking very far deep down into the oceans. Um, and that's obviously kind of a rare thing. That's why there are so, um, there are so few of them known. But uh, those few that have been found, uh, they suggest this type of form. And these animals had ten tentacles, not eight like today's uh, squid. So if you've watched my other video series, you know that I'm a big fan of fossil hunting and collecting. What do you do with all these fossils? Well, I do a few things with them. One of them, I take my fossil fossils that are in matrices and rocks that are too good to pass up, and I put them around, decorate my yard with them. The yardscape is decorated with these uh, fossils. And this, I have collared the, uh, this oak tree with cephalopod shells. And so here's some of my better ones. Um, You know, it's too good to pass these up. You know, people like to collect the ones that are loose and free and real easy to put in your pocket or your backpack, but I like to collect the ones in rocks as well. Look at this one. This is just wonderful. My friend Ron Fine found this and gave it to me. He didn't want to bother taking it home, but I love this one. It's a very subtle internal mold. See a little bit of the cone on the inside. Yeah, it's just a joy to go out and find all these fossils in Cincinnati and I know not everybody can get out of the house and travel across the country to to be here so I'd like to share these with my far away fellow fossil enthusiasts this way and at the same time I'm encouraging more of you people to put your fossils on the YouTube and educate people and share share their experiences because it's just kind of fun to be an armchair enthusiast and uh, see fossils from around the world. I have been found uh, I don't know if you can see the see the shell there. My old high school was School for Creative Performing Arts and I've made a video. It's titled SCPA Big Squid Tour and shows uh, big cephalopod fossils all the way around that school in the parkway. There's about two dozen of them. Some of them are very huge, almost two feet. So you've got to see that video if you haven't seen it. I'm going to show you a very commercially common uh, fossilized cephalopod. They're from Morocco. Morocco is one of the best places in the world for trilobite fossils as well as some really cool cephalopod fossils. And when they polish up the rock, it, it is jet black and it has white uh, calcite rich uh, fossils. This one has been, it's been carved to be a teardrop shape uh, and on the inside of that is the cephalopod shell which is tapering and cylindrical and it's polished and it's just beautiful to see the internal structures. This is not Ordovician. It is uh, probably Devonian. 
But I just wanted to show you this because it's so commonly seen in all the uh, gem and mineral shows. They're inexpensive. They're so extremely abundant. They're very, you can get these for less than 10 bucks. You know, something like this can cost about $5 or so at the gem mineral shows. Of course, there'll be much more at a store. But the gem mineral shows, there's no middle. There's, uh, you know, it's not store prices, wholesale. Just beautiful. Here's the polished side, and here's the rough side, rather gray-like. Okay, this was originally collected. It was a much larger slab. I could not pick it up as one person. What I did is I put a plank from the ground to the back trunk of my car, and I shoved this thing. I slowly inched it into the trunk by going up the plank scooting it up the plank. Once I had it home I took chisels and a sledgehammer and went to work on it to remove and whittle it down to make this rock a lot smaller. But why I brought it home was because I know this is subtle, you're not going to see it easily, but it has three very large cephalopod shell impressions. Here's one, here's the largest. You can It's hard to see but imagine a cone shape running from here in this direction and that had a circumference of at least this big. That's about five or six inches. So that would have been a cephalopod shell maybe six feet long or so. Here's another one here that probably would have been maybe a three footer and another one here. Notice that they are all lined up in parallel. That would have been done by the uh, currents of the sea uh, lining those shells up in a row like that. No coincidence. You have to have an eye for these kind of things. That is, after seeing enough uh, depressions, uh, internal molds and the shapes, the negative space of a cephalopod shell, you'd recognize it immediately. A lot of new people would not notice this. And I admit it looked better before I went to town and chiseled an awful lot of it off. And even right now, I had to get the mud off. It's very wet. It looks, it looks a little better when it's dry.